The blood of an adventurer courses through your veins. You will enjoy the greatest adventure of all. In their biggest original series yet, Netflix is releasing the semi-historical epic Marco Polo on December 12th. Now, if you know what's good for you, you won't binge on the 10 battle-soaked episodes of this John Fusco created and Harvey Weinstein executive produced series. You will feast because this is something to be savored. Now, while not the most original offering out there and sometimes slothful in its drama at the beginning, the 13th century China-based Marco Polo is still epic. It's an unsurprisingly big canvas at which history, blood, sex, betrayal, decadence, ambition, and the global aims of the Weinstein Company and Netflix are all well mixed into the palette. So take it all in, especially warlord Kupa Khan. A man who proves his loyalty to me can take whatever he wishes. If you are looking for historical accuracy of the Italian adventurer's travels, well then I suggest you turn elsewhere. But if you want a new version of the legend in our new world of the Pacific Rim, this is a silk road well worth traveling on. And Netflix has shelled out some serious cash for the new series. At around 90 million, it makes it one of the most expensive series on TV, up there in Game of Thrones territory. And that comparison works on a few other levels, I might add. The least of which is the timing of Marco Polo's release and the heart of the series itself. Simply put, in the clear absence of Game of Thrones from the small screen right now, Marco Polo has strategically jumped in with its similar nature to seemingly try to snare some of the considerable audience of the blockbuster HBO series based on George R. R. Martin's books. With a frequent Thrones director on board, as well as the duo helming the next part of the Caribbeans, they just might succeed. Marco Polo. What does that mean? The Great Explorer. Newbie Lorenzo Riccolami holds up well in the title role, and Joan Chen as Khan's favorite wife is well poised as the ruthless conscience of his growing empire. Though I have to say, more of her would have been nice in the episodes. However, just like most superhero movies and Game of Thrones, the real meat in Marco Polo is the villain. Now what can you say about the murderous Mongol warlord Kupa Khan, except there's not a speck of nice on that man at all. This is a man who the Pope of the series calls the spawn of Satan. And I have to say, the role is eagerly chewed into by British actor Benedict Wong in what will clearly be a career definer, a role that rages and reveals more and more over the episodes. So I say get on board with Marco Polo, Khan, and the gang, and dig into this one as a holiday treat for yourself. To quote the series, the Khan has come. So get ready. I'm Dominic Patton for Deadline Hollywood. <laughs>